Hello, everyone. Uh, we've started our broadcast, so um, we're going to let folks kind of join for a minute here. Um, as you join, welcome, by the way. This is Robin Jones, director of the ABF Career Alliance, and uh, this is episode 13 of the Net Effect Career Conversations and Connections. Our special guest is Miss Kim Butler. So happy to have her with us today. And uh, we'll talk more about Kim as we introduce her moving forward. But before we do that, I want to make sure we get through some count housekeeping items. Uh, open your Q&A. If you haven't done that yet, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little bar that says, uh, uh, has some icons, and one of them says Q&A. So click that open, if you would, please and type your name and where you're from in the Q&A box. I'm gonna make sure all the questions and everybody can see, so I've enabled that, so we should be able to see everything. Great, hey William, Beatrix, Tara, nice, Gordon, thank you, glad to see you all here. I know people are still joining. If, you haven't, if you're having any trouble with Zoom, be sure that you download the app in case you can't see what we're talking about. Um, make sure that that's rolling. Uh, I have disabled chat, so communication will be through Q&A. And if you have questions, be sure that you put them in the q and I'll be monitoring that as we're moving forward. So we'll, we are going to attempt to get to all those questions. We've got a few, got a pretty good list. Um, so we're gonna make sure we do our best to get those in place. Um, thank you, hi Jan, good to see you again. Ned, nice to see you. Um, so let's get rolling. Um, I wanna talk about, I've known this wonderful lady for many years now. Yep, I can remember when she was first getting started in the business um, and I can remember when she was in college. Uh, so it's been so much fun to watch your journey and your incredible success and the way that you have embraced innovation and, and thought provoking ideas and dispelling and busting the common myths about the typical financial investments. So I've, I've always loved that. She's CEO and founder of Partners for Our Prosperity and um, a federally registered investment advisor firm. It serves in all 50 states. Well, that's pretty incredible and an accomplished author of eight books. I don't know when you find time to do all that stuff and raise kids as well and work on a farm. My gosh, it's incredible. So um, I want to welcome you. There's much more and there's many more accolades. We could spend the next 15 minutes talking about those, but I would like to get right into it, Kim, um, and talk about our subject today. I, I know it, this is a very interesting time to be in your line of work with all the headlines. I mean, Forbes today is that Dow jumps 350 points after, uh, you know, there's a, some sort of new drug. I mean, every day it's just like back and forth and back and forth. And, and I know you're thinking about some of these issues. So tell us a little bit about how you're going about your day in the world that you live in. Well, I'm, First of all, super glad to be here. Thank you, Robin, for your kind words and welcome to everybody. Such a joy to be able to share good, good things with you. And on the personal finance side, I am so grateful to have been for 25 years of the 30 years that I've been practicing in this space in an area where things like stock market roller coaster rides don't have an impact. Well, that's I work, incredible. Mm -hmm, I work with people's money in the areas of certainty only, and it just allows us to steer clear of all of the mess. Well, I love that. You know, you, you mentioned um, kind of the importance of ongoing inspiration at your fingertips. Tell so, us what you mean by that. So literally, in fact, uh, we did a webinar about a month ago with a group of financial advisors. So my husband has software that he trains financial advisors on. It's called Truth Concepts. My dad loves to say truth, huh? Is that with a capital T? 
So uh, Truth Concepts software training helps us be in contact with advisors all over the country. And we were typically with other financial advisors that also work in this area of certainty. Some of them do have assets under management, the typical stock bond mutual fund space, but many of them don't. And so this was a just group of advisors and I chose to start the webinar with what I had been challenged with the prior week. And this was um, early June, I think, and it doesn't even matter what the challenge is, right? But something was challenging me and so I made sure, so this is a, a message version of the Bible. It's leather. It has the word think on it. I got it out of the like giveaway bin at some reading room that was closing, I think. Right. It doesn't really matter where it came from, but I literally mean at my fingertips. And I, what I was showing the advisors is like this close for inspiration. It doesn't matter what you choose but you want it that close. And then it was funny because I also had a list of existing clients that I felt needed to be reached out to that was also at my fingertips because if I ran out of time, I had two choices. Fear was not a choice. This was a choice or this was a choice. And that is it. And it's so important that we have things to turn to immediately so that we don't spin our wheels in, in mental spaces where we should not be. And, and how did that group respond to that idea? And that, I mean, cause you know, every, so many people are afraid to talk about their faith. They're afraid to share the ideas that we've all held so true and dear our entire lives. They're afraid of criticism and judging and being outside of this or that. And how did they respond to that? I actually got some really cool comments. People are so appreciative these days of anything that's authentic. And so as long as that sharing is authentic, and Robin, I got to tell you, in the business world today, people are way more open-minded than even a year ago, than five years ago, than 10 years ago. And I always use the word spiritual slash inspirational and that why if somebody just doesn't resonate with the spiritual word, they'll resonate with the inspirational word. And so right. whether, whether I'm coaching for strategic coach or helping our advisors or speaking with a client, I will absolutely say, what inspires you? What are you reading that's inspiring to you? What music, what movies? It doesn't matter really what the source of inspiration is, but let's make sure you've got one. And this group of people that you work with, I mean, they're, you've been with them for a while, right? I mean, it's not like they're, I mean, th these are some of some really high level uh, experienced, successful people, right? The audience was actually mixed. It, oh. was, it was a lot of the group that you're speaking of that we do attract, and I'm so grateful for that. And it was also because it's a public webinar. So it was also, um, we always have about 20% that are brand new, don't really know us from anywhere. You know, maybe they've read a book or watched a video or listened to our podcast or something, but um, I still do not hesitate. And um, I remember even a couple of years ago, we had an event that it was ending on a Sunday and I tried not to do our events on Sundays, but the way the hotels and the dates just worked, it was the way it went. And so I read a hymn, I read it as a poem from our hymnal Sunday morning at the beginning of the event. And I got so many nice compliments. Again, if it's done properly and it's done with authenticity and humility, I find that those that are good with it are the part of the community that I want to attract. And if there's people that aren't, then they're not the right match anyway. Well, I think that that's probably, um, and maybe you've gotten a little bit of inspiration from that guy, Jesus, who he didn't minister to everybody either, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's well, okay. as, yeah, that's right. It's okay, isn't it? So you mentioned um, a couple things that um, I thought were really interesting, and I, and particularly in light of, the fact that everybody is home and or all these things are happening. Talk to us a little bit about how you're staying motivated and, and how you keep that beautiful smile in front of yourself and right there present all the time. 
Well, um, because of good spiritual prep work in the morning. And then this attitude of give first, which was installed in me and my sister, Tammy, when we were young, my mother had a saying that drove me crazy as I was <laughs> growing up. <laughs> Moms. Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And instead of, you know, like, okay, bye, have a good time. She would always say, give a good time. Ooh. Yep. And I adopted that as an approach, an attitude, a demeanor, a way of being that I have used ever since. And so as an example, all doing all during 2008 and 2009, when we were dealing with that economic turmoil, I did the same thing. I just reached out and I gave first. And even though the bulk of our finances are in areas of certainty, we have a lot of clients that still have parts of their finances in areas of uncertainty. And so it's still important for us to be in touch with them. And that's literally what this list was for. I printed out physically printed so that I could mark off by hand every single client as I reached out to them, left a voicemail, sent an email, whatever. And I, I noticed it recently and again back in 08 and 09 when I was doing it, if I ever felt sad or fearful in the morning when I came into the office and I've been a work from home company literally since the internet began, all I had to do was get on the phone with a client and give first. And it shifted my own internal, whatever it was, fear or sadness that I was dealing with. And it brought my focus right to where it belonged, which was that person that was on the phone with me that I was there to help. And sometimes helping is just listening. Sometimes helping is making suggestions. But when you look at it that way and you give first and you give first and you give first, then whatever fear I was feeling just gets shoved off the table. Because if you fill the space with gratitude, there is no more room. So that enemy that is the enemy of success, fear really, right? That's an enemy that's kind of common no matter if it's today or three years from now or 10 years ago. It's, it's one of those things that, that we have to, to, to identify as an enemy of success. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Yep. And all it's going to do is show its head with a different name every single time. I, 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 totally, I totally agree with that. Um, so as, as, as we're thinking about things, you've been talking a great deal about reaching in to your clients and, and reaching out to clients with the, the give first thought. You know, um, one, of, one of the things that we've been encouraging and hoping to help people with, and that's that idea of being able to reach out into a community and why it's so important to, to talk to people we know and talk to people that we don't know. Um, how, how do you move in that place so confidently and so effortless, effortlessly? Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to really give Dan Sullivan at Strategic Coach the credit for that. So Strategic Coach has been instrumental in my life for 25 years. He has a program that's in Chicago and Toronto and uh, LA and actually overseas as well. And it's got about 60 different industries in it. So as a business person, you go to Chicago four times a year and you're in a room with other industries and, and there's just so much value in that. And one of the things that Dan taught us a long time ago and has continued to really encourage is this idea of giving first, he uses different language, but also of listening first and asking a good solid question and then remembering that we have two ears and one mouth <laughs> and zip in our lips because especially salespeople, and I am a consummate salesperson, I love to sell things, but salespeople talk too much and it is shocking. Whenever I'm being sold to, I'm always amazed. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times I'll ask one or two questions and then it's 25 minutes of the client talking. And that's what gets the results. They don't need to hear me talk. They need to hear themselves think. 
So what kind of questions? I mean, I, I've always, it's always interesting to me when someone says, ask a good question. And I go, well, okay, what's a good question? You know, what, what, is, what are some good questions? Yes, my favorite, again, from Dan. So here's another little prop is called the Dan Sullivan Question. This is an Amazon book that you can grab. It's super skinny. It's totally appropriate for any industry. My father used it as a principal of an elementary school, and I've got clients in every industry known to man that use this. And it is, it's called the R Factor Question. It, R stands for relationship. And it is, if we were meeting here three years from today, what has to have happened for you to be pleased with your progress? I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we were meeting here three years from today, what has to have happened for you to be pleased with your progress? And if you're meeting with somebody face to face, you take your pen and your paper and you look at them and you look at your paper and you do not talk and you look at them and you look at their paper until they start to talk. And then you start taking notes over the phone. I just am silent. And that can be a little weird. If yeah, you're not yeah if you're not used to it. Right, yeah. But I do it, I do it all the time. So much so that sometimes people will say, are you still there? And I'll say, yes, I'm just waiting for your answer. Got it, yeah, that's great. What a great question. Any other questions that you like? Well, there's a fun follow-up to it and it has three parts. So the first is, what are you afraid of? And when you use that emotional word, and I'm not a big fan of using the word fear or afraid, but the fact is when you use that emotional word, you immediately get to somebody's heart, which is where we connect with people. Right, right. And then you can ask, what are you most excited about? And then you can ask, what are your best strengths? And this mm. is fun, like if you have a, group like a husband and a wife maybe it's really fun to ask the husband what the wife's strengths are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and vice versa or if you have two business partners you ask one business partner what the strengths are of the other business partner mm -hmm. because as we have learned finally over time you know us human beings will do better if we just identify our strengths and work to build those our god-given talents if you will right and yet so many people are trying to improve something that they feel like they're not doing a good job of. So I'm not interested in that. I want to know what you're awesome at and I want to elevate that. I love that. I, I think that is such an incredible, powerful tool and great questions. So let's talk about your top takeaways um, from the, the, uh, that you want to leave with um, our, our listeners? Well, have your inspiration at hand, literally pictures, you know, um, uh, JSH online, whatever it is that you have, Sentinel in your purse, whatever works for you. I still use uh, index cards from time to time, you know, just having something at hand, like at hand. And then th this give first attitude and it, it just becomes such a habit. And it's, so important that we understand that we're already 100% disciplined. We just, if we want different results, we have to adopt different habits. And once you adopt this type of habit and you see it start to get good in your life, then you just get better and better at it and you get quicker at doing it. And you just trust that you're in front of the right people with which to do that for. And then I think it's awesome in today's world that you can reach out to anybody at any reason, any time in many, many ways that are perfectly acceptable, like on LinkedIn as an example. And if you'll give first first, then they'll help you get the results that you are looking for. And so I always encourage people, don't just say, well, what can I do to help you? That's not specific enough. Say, my strength is X, Y, Z, could it be a value to you? Or if you think you know how it could be a value to them, then be specific. And I think people are really, really willing to help. I know I would jump on the phone for 15 minutes with 
almost anybody that asked. And as long as they had a good reason, I really felt like I could be of value to them. There is just a community of human beings that get a lot of juice out of giving. And so that's the type of community people look for. And then that's the type of community they will find. Well, how do you expand your thinking? You know, I mean, I, I think sometimes people think, well, I've read that and, you know, that's a new, I, I mean, what does it really mean to expand your thinking and, and to reach what is possible? I think it's always, always just be looking for what's up, like literally picking your chin up and, and look high for inspiration as in literally. And then also just to be seeing what's out there and to read very, very widely um, including things that you disagree with from time to time, I think are valuable. Now, I will tell you, I am crazy religiously careful about what I read, but at the same time, I try to read widely. So I always look for the source. I want to know who's writing. Um, I'm not a Facebook person. I'm on it, but I don't prefer to read there. I want to go deeper than that. And so, of course, I start with Christian Science Monitor, and I follow people like Dan Sullivan Peter Diamandis is another favorite of mine. Um, I love marketing things. I read financial things, of course. And then if I get somebody in a new industry, then I try to read about them a little bit. You know, the web is wonderful. You can mm -hmm. go to somebody's website and read about them and get a sense of what are they writing about? Are they blogging? Are they, and I, I prefer to read. I know other people prefer to learn a different way. So if you're a listener, great, then Anybody that's out there that has information that you're curious about probably has a podcast, find it. Or if you're a video person, you know, the searches on YouTube and that kind of thing. And just be really, really conscious about what goes in your mind. You know, we've learned to be a little more careful about what we put in our bodies. What we put in our mind is probably more important. And so I heard somebody the other day say, I'm studying ontology. Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> the ontology, in case anybody can't remember, is the study of the science of being. Mm. And I immediately sent them science and health. Now, I wouldn't just do this to anybody. It was somebody that I had a relationship with. But I said, here's what I read when I study ontology. So, I mean, those are the kinds of conversations that are happening when you're listening for them and you're looking for them. And to quote Dan Sullivan again, he says, your eyes will only see and your ears will only hear what your brain is looking for. Oh, interesting. That's right? Yeah, it's terrific. I, I'm always amazed at how quick our time goes when we get in these. And um, so I, I'm going to move on into some of the resources that we've talked about. So if I'm interested in your line of work or I, I, you know, I want to get involved. How do I mean, how are, what are some of the things that we can do? And I thought you're, it was kind of interesting that you put your alma mater up here very first and four. I know they're going to be very happy to see that those, those Panthers out there. Oh yeah, here we go. Yep. Got the, got the coaster right there. Seen that. I've seen that myself actually. So um, tell us a little bit about some of these resources that, that we have here. Well, I love print. Uh, we had three generations of our family go there, and I just am immensely grateful for it. Um, I have an English degree, by the way. I hope my English professors are okay with the books that I have on Amazon. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yet, I love personal finance. And frankly, the value that I got from print, of course, was learning how to think and communicate. And my skill in communication is way more important than my skill with number crunching, even though my husband has awesome software and I love it. It's so important. So whatever it is that you're doing to learn, and I, I like, earlier I mentioned, I really like getting clear on how you learn best because some people really need that classroom environment. It, however, though, if you're a reader and you can read and do well, that's awesome. If you are a listener, then just know that and go after podcasts. I read, I want blog posts and I want articles. I don't want podcasts. I don't want videos. And yet I have those things because I understand that my clients need to have a really wide range of learning also. So um, if, mm -hmm. if people are curious 
um, they're welcome to go to Prosperity Economics Movement. Um, actually, it's prosperityeconomics.org is really the best place for people to go, prosperityeconomics.org. And then we have advisors that we're helping and we have people that are interested in the financial services that we're helping. So uh, people are welcome to reach out to me through you or whatever additional information that we have here. Um, and then I also want to share about Udacity. Do we have a page for that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. Yeah. So Udacity.com is a fabulous website. And I just got an email today that they have financial aid available. And at Udacity, they have nano degrees. And you can <laughs> get in, log on, get this little nano degree in a matter of weeks. I think their normal courses may be six to 14 weeks. I'm not mm -hmm. exactly sure of that, but it's pretty short. And then they are a hiring machine because a lot of their work is in the technological space. And they have a really broad range of courses that they teach people how to do specific skills. And then they have employers that are looking for those skills. So if you're looking to add a little bit of extra income, excuse me, if you're looking to just take on a whole new career, I've had a couple clients switch wholesale into whatever they learned at Udacity. And now that's what they do full time. Is that right? Super valuable place to go. Wow. Awesome. Yep. And then these other two are books. So James Altucher has a fabulous book uh, called 40 Alternatives to College. Um, there's another book called The Education of Millionaires that I just love. So if you are in the like maybe early high school or you're looking at college, I think those are wise books to read right now because even if you and I were not sitting here talking in July of 2020 with all the stuff that's going on, by the way, I never say anything other than the, the date like that. I'm not interested in that word. Um, in July of 2020, we have now an amazing open door for what education is going to look like. Like it got thrown wide open, the hinges are off. And so I think it's so important to look now at different ways for education. And these are two books that are super helpful in that category. I love it. I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Um, and with the kind of work that you do, you've always been an educator and you always work from that basis with your clients, I know. So those kinds of self-education opportunities are near and dear to your heart. Um, I, I want to get into our Q&A session. Now, we've got quite a few questions in here, and I, I'm, we're going to do our best to kind of get to all of them. Um, Tara asked a question in the Q&A, and, and maybe you can comment on this, um, um, about green investing, mm -hmm. as in William J. Uh, Jen's book, Value, Valuing Nature. I'm not sure. I don't know that book. You may know it, but um, what do you say to, what do you say to that? Well, I think that people should get investments that are good for them, like as the investor. And so if green investing is your thing, and I'm not familiar with the book either, but I do know and have investments that would be considered green. And for some people that is absolutely the right thing. And other people, it's not. And that's okay too. And so I think it's super important that people find investments that they can really resonate with. I'm always looking for a win, win, win. I want it to be a win for the seller, a win for the buyer, and a win for me, the advisor, because I'm not interested in the kind of investments where we're quarterly rebalancing and calling because the market is up, down, or sideways and worrying about who's in the president's office and all those other things. I'm not interested in that. So make sure it works for you and make sure it works for the seller. It's not sustainable if it's not gonna work for the seller. And then you may or may not care whether it works for your financial advisor, but um, I'm just a big believer that triple wins are good things. Do you, uh, do you think this is a time to pause and stop? And I mean, what, what, what are you saying to people when they come to you with the fear and the concern? And you know, what is that? What do you do with that? If you have fears about the value of your investments, and it's something that you can do something about. Sometimes you're in a deal and you got to stay. There's nothing you can do. But if you have fears about the value of your investment roller coaster riding and you can do something about it, then I would. And I am recommending these days that people take a really hard look at their stock market portfolios and consider something different. Because even if they do nothing as in just move it all to cash. So I guess that's not doing nothing. 
even if they move the money to cash and it's then essentially doing nothing, that is better and more important for your peace of mind and your lack of fear because you as a human being have value, but you can't provide that value if in the back of your head is, oh my God, what's happening to my 401k plan? Or, oh dear, my 403b plan is gonna get shuttered and turn into a, what do they call them, 201 or 203b um, if we have a stock market crash. So I believe absolutely if you are concerned and you can get your money out of whatever is causing you concern, and I'm not talking about paying penalties and taxes, typically within those types of places, you can move the money around so that it's mm -hmm. not subject to the roller coaster ride. Well, um, I thought this was an interesting question, question from Debbie. Um, she said, uh, MBE in her lifetime invested primarily in her real estate and tax-free municipal bonds. How do those investments look today? So I love real estate. We have lots of real estate clients. We have lots of real estate investors as clients. And we have a lot of types of real estate deals that we help people with. Um, it, again, it's not right for everybody, but I am a big fan. Um, the muni bonds, I will go on record stating that I'm a little concerned about them because we are seeing municipalities go out of business. Like that was unheard of just even 10 right. years ago. Right. Um, we prefer a different place for certainty money. And we use a product known as whole life insurance that has been around for two to 300 years and is guaranteed to grow every single year, even if a dividend does not get paid. I think that's a better muni bond equivalent. I got you. So Jack was interested in uh, if you don't have resources for an MBA, what's an alternative means for gaining that knowledge? Yeah. Um, free. There's so much <laughs> free material on the web these days. And um, I will admit, I'm just really thinking that the whole formal school structure is going to go through a major overhaul. And I think employers are starting to realize that just even having a college degree is not what it used to be, not necessary for a lot of positions. And I'm well aware that the corporate world loves their MBAs, et cetera, et cetera. Yet I would not let that limit you for two seconds. Go after your area of interest and get some specialized courses in that area. There's all kinds of certificates that you can get on the web. And maybe it does cost you a couple hundred bucks. Um, our daughter Kaylee just got on and got a scrum master certificate for $200 and uh, some self-study time and a test. And now she can put that on her LinkedIn account. So right. there's so much good out there. And don't ever, ever think that not having some type of degree limits your capability because there are entrepreneurial companies out there all day long, every day that do not care whether you have a college degree or an MBA or a PhD, they hire for attitude, they hire for mindset, they, they hire for capabilities, they hire for specificity, and whatever letters you got or not got behind your name is irrelevant. I'm sure you've seen quite a few people in your line of work that have been very successful based on self-knowledge and, you know, learning um, on the job, so to speak, or learning from different resources. Um, you, you guys have alpacas. Is that another thing that you do in your spare time? Yes, we have alpacas. Um, they don't take a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's, here's my alpaca that we have. Yes. Well, that, see, now that falls within the category of my swear dear daddy-in-law who said, son, you never invest in anything that eats while you sleep. <laughs> so I will admit we do have 17 live alpacas out in the barn. Um, this is just a representation of them but um, they are very easy to take care of. I did want to ask you, and there was the question earlier, um, and, and maybe you can touch on this briefly, um, about your seven principles of prosperity. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and give us kind of a quick introduction to what that means, what that looks like? 
Yes. I was so grateful to God because one day about probably 20 years ago, I decided that we needed to be operating from a standpoint of principle. And I knew that there were economic laws that have been in operation since the beginning of time that impact our personal finances. And I felt like they needed to be put on a single piece of paper. And so I sat down in one sitting and I listened and I started writing and I'm a real like blunt to the point kind of person. And so I came up with seven single words. So they are think, see, control, flow, move, multiply. I'm forgetting one. Think, see, oh, think, see, measure. Right. Control, cash flow or flow, and then move and multiply. You got them. And I described each one. And I just put them on a piece of paper and we started sending them to clients. These are our seven principles of prosperity. And we put them on a little magnet and we have used them ever since. We've tweaked the wording, not the seven words, but the definitions just a little bit over time. But I really felt like they were a gift from God that helped me explain economic laws that affect our personal finances. And this is where a lot of people, I think, go wrong with personal finance. They think that somehow they don't have to pay attention to the economic laws. And so having those has been so valuable. And I think you're going to show a link at the end. Anybody's welcome to go on the web and grab them. You, mm -hmm. you get to sign up and you get a little book called Financial Planning Has Failed, which is my story of the transition that I made after five years in the business of realizing that typical financial planning was not doing the job. And I coined this term prosperity economics, which is what we practice now, which is based in these economic laws and has these seven principles of prosperity that it abides by. The super cool thing, Robin, is that once I had those seven principles, I was amazed how the seven words applied to so many other things. So like think, see, measure. Well, we think about our finances. We think about our health. We can think about our relationships. Like those seven principles apply to so many aspects in life. And that is what makes a principle a principle. I love it. Well, and I think with that, I think we shall end our session because we're running over time as normal. I try to get it done quicker, but there's so much valuable information and so much important content uh, for people to know about. Um, I'm going to launch our poll. I'd really appreciate it if folks would take a few seconds to answer those simple questions that we have. Give us your feedback. It's really important for us to know how we're doing, if you like what we're doing, um, if, we're, if it's the right amount of time. So just take a few minutes as we go through. As Kim mentioned, she's also a career ally for ABF and has been for several years. And we so appreciate your willingness to serve and help others and help our students. Uh, I've posted her career connection on our Twitter feed. It's, it's easy to get to. You can go to our Twitter account or you can go to the abfcareeralliance.org and click any one of the three yellow tabs, job seeker, career ally, or student. And on the right-hand side, you'll see our Twitter feed. And all you have to do is click on that link right there where my arrow is and it will take you to her career connection. So if you're interested in finances, or if you're interested in learning more about Kim and what she does, informational interviews, uh, so on and so forth, please be sure that you reach out and we'll make sure if you have, we'll get connected. If you have any trouble, email me, robin at albertbakerfund.org. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Um, be sure that you are connecting with us on social media. We have a lot of things going here at the Albert Baker Fund. So at it's Facebook at the Albert Baker Fund, Twitter at ABF underscore connections. Instagram is underscore at Albert or at Albert Baker Fund and LinkedIn is the ABF Career Alliance. So take a moment and make sure that you tell your friends about what you're doing. If you're if you're learning things and you like what we're doing, tell your friends and family. Let them know we're a community of people that are like-minded, active in Christian science, or familiar and friendly to Christian science. We established 
um, a campaign at the beginning of all this, all these challenges with COVID-19 called the Brotherly Love Campaign. And so we, we've been reaching out to our students to find out what they need, what are their, what's it, what's it going to be like for them in the fall, what's happened. So we established some, an extra fund so that we could meet those challenges and those needs of our students. And as we've prayed to respond, we've been thinking so um, dearly about our namesake, Albert Baker, and how he reached in and helped his dear sister, our leader, Mary Baker Eddy. So in the spirit of brotherly love, in helping our students, please uh, keep us in mind for that. If you have not participated in the Career Alliance, if you have not become a career ally, please do so. Um, like Kim, um, it's it's our community that helps. It's our community that can reach and um, support one another. So please take a moment and become a career ally and post a career connection. I just posted a new one this morning. Uh, and I so appreciate that. She's going to be a featured speaker coming. It's really exciting. I can't wait to have her. Um, we've got job opportunities, internships. We've featured Christian science nursing and, and, the, and, the, and, and uh, the possibilities there. So uh, again, take a moment and become a career ally and register. Our spirit is really to help folks in these times and at all times to cast your net on the right side. Uh, so many great ideas today, Kim, of the examples of casting that net on the right side. What a terrific and well thought and so much good information. We so appreciate your help and your thoughts and um, all the things that you shared with us today. So thank you so, so much for being a guest on the net effect. Happy to. Thanks. Right. I appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us. Look forward to next week. Can't wait to see you. Bye for now. Have a great weekend.